De Romeinen hadden een spreekwoord. Ik ben bang voor de man van één boek. En ik ga je dus niet één boek vermelden, maar zeven boeken die chronologisch, tussen de leeftijd van 12 en 18 jaar, de sterkste indruk op mij hebben gemaakt. De Leeuw van Vlaanderen van Conscience, die mij verslaafd heeft gemaakt aan het lezen van boeken. Les Miserables van Victor Hugo en Terluinenspiegel van Charles de Koster, die mij het bewustzijn hebben gegeven van de sociale kwestie. Het communistisch manifest van Marx en Engels, die mij de verklaring hebben gegeven, heeft gegeven van die sociale kwestie. De geschiedenis van de Russische revolutie van Trotsky en de verradenrevolutie van Trotsky, die uiteenzetten welke de eerste grootscheepse poging is geweest om die sociale kwestie op te lossen en waarom dat uh, in sterke mate mislukt is. En tenslotte uh, het kapitaal, dat kapitaal van Karl Marx, uh, dat ik op de leeftijd van 18 jaar heb gelezen en uh, dat van al die boeken wel de sterkste indruk op mij heeft gemaakt. In de eerste plaats de oplage en het verkoop van de boeken van Trotsky, van hoe? <laughs> dat, is een, dat is nu een, een Freudian slip. Oh la 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 la. <laughs> dat is een Freudiaanse slip. Oh god, allemachtig. Alleen we beginnen opnieuw. <laughs> Between 1928 and 1938, the wage sum in Germany, total wage sum, remained exactly the same. Uh, profits increased by 300%, not by 30%, by 300%. That was the function of fascism in a nutshell. In order to do that, uh, Nazis had to build up a big mass movement and they needed money to do that. They got some backing from foreign capitalists. In the first place, Henry Ford, who was obsessional anti-Semite, who supported any big anti-Jewish movement in Europe and so also supported uh, the Nazis. But they got a decisive backing from some of the key figures of German heavy industry and German banking. These people backed Hitler at a decisive moment after the big economic crisis of 29-30 broke out. They wanted to solve that crisis in the first place at the expense of the German workers by lowering of the part of wages and social security in the national income in which they succeeded, and secondly at the expense of the people of the rest of Europe by developing big armament industry and starting a war of aggression and of conquest against the Soviet Union, against Eastern Europe, where Hitler dreamed of building up his British Empire. The first refugees who came to our home, also some members of our family, but some friends. And, well, the years 1933, 1935 were very terrible years in Belgium. It was the depth of the crisis and... Uh, People were very hungry, of course, it was much worse than today. Eh? 36 was a turning point for me, my personal life, and for my father. Two things together, the Spanish Civil War and the Moscow Trials. Mm -hmm. uh, both things in the working class movement in Antwerp and in Belgium played an important role, especially the Spanish Civil War. The Spanish Civil War saw a tremendous wave of solidarity. I remember very well the demonstration of May 1st, 1937. There were perhaps 100,000 people in the streets and uh, the people coming back from uh, the international brigades from Spain. Before the Vietnam Solidarity Campaign, it was the biggest international expression of mass internationalism which we have had in Belgium. Um, but then the Moscow trials, that was a tremendous shock for my father. He had known personally some of Many the of people the, involved, yeah. uh, several of the defendants of the first trial who were functionaries of the Comintern, and Radek, who was one of the main defendants of the second trial. 
he constituted a committee of solidarity with the Moscow trial defendants and with Comrade Trotsky, and he got in contact with a small Trotsky's group which existed in Antwerp. They came to our place, they met in our place, and I became actually, at the age of 13, a Trotsky sympathizer. I can't say a member because that's <laughs> childish. Huh? We wouldn't let organization was not so stupid that it would let children into its ranks of 13 years, but okay. I mean, I became, I was present at meetings, listening. We were very isolated, very isolated. We made one distribution of a leaflet on the main streets of, uh, of Antwerp, which was not such an intelligent way to act, but okay. This, what did this, the leaflet this, say? Against the war, uh, saying the war is coming, this is not our war, and so on and so forth. was not received very popularly. It was written in a very abstract and propagandistic way. I didn't write it. <laughs> Don't take any responsibility for it. But did you I did distribute it? I distributed it, obviously. So you were 15 when you distributed 15, your first 16, leaflet? Yes. Yes. Uh, 15, yeah, 15 and a half. Perhaps near to 16 when it was... Uh, right. Yeah, it was near to 16. Um, that was a very difficult time. That's probably the most difficult time we have had. And when our organization, which was composed really of two sectors in Belgium, one little mass base we had in one region of the coal mining districts where we had around 600 members who had come to us from social democracy and where we had the absolute majority in one mining town the answer of the employers was to immediately close down the pit in that town this has never been opened again all these miners who voted for the extreme left were victimized for their political engagement with permanent loss. They, they died as unemployed. So then the, the country was occupied and the first weeks was total expectation, uh, disorientation by everybody. The leader of the Socialist Party had been assistant uh, prime minister chairman of the Socialist Party, capitulated before the Nazis, Hendrik de Man. He made a public appeal to collaborate with the Nazis. Part of the trade union apparatus supported him. The CP published a legal newspaper under the Nazi... Stalin-Hitler uh, Pact. Stalin-Hitler Pact, under the Nazi censorship. And we got our shock. We hesitated a moment. We were very weak, very small. And uh, we hesitated a moment. And when we heard the murder of the old man, the murder of Trotsky. Papers, Belgian papers published uh, the information the day after, 21st of August. Uh, immediately, uh, one of the legendary figures of Belgian communism, Comrade Polk, who had been a founding member of the Communist Party, member of the Central Committee, first Central Committee of the Communist Party, right through the 20s, and who had become a Trotskyist, the left oppositionist at the end of the 20s. He came crying to my father's home. He had known the old man personally uh, on several occasions. And uh, we said, I mean, I remember, I don't want to put it on my person, because everybody who was there, there were seven, eight people there, said the same thing. But the only way to answer that is immediately restart the organization and restart activity and show this dirty murderer that he just can't suppress ideas and he can't suppress a political current. We started to publish our first illegal newspaper uh, before the end of the year 1940. We had set up a little illegal print shop and all that started to function uh, well, I must say, well, uh, under the circumstances, there was a small illegal organization, and things went rather well for us. We had good response in some workers' quarters and in the universities, because we, in a certain sense, had a monopoly. The CP was not at all identified with resistance. Uh, the Social Democrats were rather identified with collaboration. After the winter, things changed. After the winter, the, the defeat uh, of the Germans in the Battle of Britain had something to do with that. The rise of the winter was 